Today, we're going to talk about the installation of the Geocon Model 4000 strain gauge. These items here are the essential elements. This is the strain gauge itself, all stainless steel. These are what are called mounting brackets. This device here is a plucking coil. It's used to excite and read the frequency that the gauge produces. This device is for setting the spacing of these brackets in order to weld them. It's put into this fixture here to get the correct orientation and length. Then we take this Allen key, snug the screw onto the end block, maintain this tight up against this fixture, Snug, do not tighten, just snug them up. That's it, now we're ready to do the primary installation. This is the sample that we're gonna weld the gauge to. So the first step is to locate the gauge position. So what I'm gonna do is put it in the center of this channel, approximately midway. So first thing to do is to scribe a line. We use what's called soapstone. It's gonna be approximately in the center of this steel channel and it's an eight inch channel, so we're gonna put it at four inches. And we'll grab a straight edge, scribe the line. That's the center line of the gauge. Now to get the center of the channel, 26 is 13 inches. Good the mark there. We grab the gauge on the spacer bar, center it over that. You can do it exactly or approximately. I'm going to do it approximately. And then make a mark there and one there. The next step is to clean the surface. And so for this, we use a grinder. The amount of surface that has to be cleaned is just a little bit larger than the mounting brackets. Just mark this, and then we're going to attack it with the grinder. It doesn't have to be perfect. You have to get rid of rust and scale, clean a surface area where the blocks are going to go, and have at it. The next step is to weld the blocks to the cleaned area. Recenter the gauge. Today we're going to use a MIG welder, which is probably not what we'll be using in the field. Most field installations use a device called a stick welder, but the procedure is very much the same. We're going to tack these blocks. A tack weld is just a spot weld, a small area. Tack these blocks, then we're going to remove the spacer bar because if we don't, it'll get very hot and difficult to get out. Following this tack welding, we can remove the spacer bar because we have to do the finish weld, and if we leave it in there, it will get very hot and hard to handle. Slide the bar out, and then we'll finish the weld. These welds, in many cases, they need to be really quite substantial welds. This could be a pile where the, the gauge is actually on a driven pile, so just tack welding won't do it. It needs to be quite securely welded. This is welded, it's very hot. Many times in the field, you're gonna be rushed by the contract to get this done. So one way to speed it up a little bit is wet rags on the welds. And you can possibly hear this sizzling. When the rag catches fire, you know you've left it on there too long. Otherwise, you'd have to wait for quite a while for these to cool down before you could start doing the rest of the operation. Here's another step that we may consider in many situations where you're in a construction site. You might need to cover the gauge just to protect it from flying objects and so on, nosy people, etc. So we have this cover plate, and it's basically just a simple metal gadget that's held in place over the gauge. So it has these two, a fixed hole and a slotted hole that will allow for some movement. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the distance from here to here, mark it on our center line, weld these bolts down, and they'll be used to hold the cover in place. So the first thing to do is get this distance from the center of that to the center of that is about 21 and a quarter inches. So the, as you can see, the position of this is not critical. It could be just about anywhere. So. So on here, we're going to mark 21 and a quarter inches. So here's one position, and here's the other position. And then we'll have to grind that a bit so that we can weld these bolts like so. Okay. 
Now we're going to locate the bolts. Just the distance along the axis is not critical, but you have to keep the spacing fairly close. And then weld. The weld is not super critical, but needs to be fairly substantial. Now we can check to see if we did it right. Put that there. That's the way the cover will look. It has uh, nuts and washers for the end. But. So the next step is to install the gauge. The gauge has a plain end and an end with a V-groove. The V-groove end goes in the block with the single set screw. Slide it through, and the trick here is to Make them both engage at the same time. There we go. Engage the set screw in the V groove in the, in the block at the end of the sensor. Tighten it fairly snug. Don't be shy. So that takes care of setting that end. Following the tightening of that, we need to install the coil. So as you can see, this tube, it has a crimp in the center where the coil engages the tube. And when we do that, we need to include this hose clamp. So put the coil until it stops at the end of the slot. Open up the hose clamp, being sure you have the gauge all the way into the slot of the hose clamp. That basically centers the excitation coil. Tighten the clamp, and again, snug, not extremely snug, but snug, don't be shy. Snug it up. That takes care of that operation. The gauge is now ready to be set at the desired position in the range, and this is done by using this readout box. It's the GK404. Now, this particular gauge is read in a certain position on the readout box, and the switch here shows the position. So this, this device is read in what we call position C. And if you notice, when you push this button, the position numbers change. So you don't want it in A and you don't want it in F, you want it in C. There's C, and then there's a thing called mode, which is the units of readout. So in this case, we want microstrain, which is what that symbol means. The other mode might be hertz, which would be the frequency. But we want, at this time, we want to read it out in microstrain. So we set it to microstrain. Then we connect the leads, a very simple operation color for color. The black and the red are connected to the strain gauge itself. The green and the white are for a temperature gauge that's included in that excitation coil for measuring temperature. So we always take simultaneous readings of strain and temperature. The blue wire is for elimination of electrical noise. The, the gauge comes from the factory pre-tensioned at about 3,000 microstrain. This is reading 3206, 3,206 microstrain. So for a mid-range position, it's about 2,500 microstrain for this gauge. So the way we do that is we put a force either through the end of this gauge, if you can see the reading changing, or by pushing or pulling on this coil. In this case, I think I'm going to use the end of the gauge. And then you tighten, alternately, these set screws. So the first thing you do is try to get a steady reading of 2,500 microstrain. So there's 25, 70, 26, I'm getting close. And when I say 25, plus or minus 25 or 30 is fine. Or some other reading you might want, it, depending on what your installation is. So now it's reading 2476. So at this point, you want to get a little tougher with this thing, tighten the screws fairly snug, alternately too. So it'll go back and forth a bit as you tighten the screws. While you're setting this reading, these ends are cooling. And you won't really get a stable zero reading until everything has come to equilibrium. But it's fairly cool. So it should end up somewhere between 2460 and 25, maybe 20. Don't forget to record the reading and the temperature. The next and final step is to attach this cover plate. Make sure you get the wire coming out of the end. Or alternatively, there's a what's called a knockout right here. 
And this can be used if you want to use electrical conduit. You take the knockout out and the conduit fitting goes in there. You run the cable through the conduit. That's it. The job's done. You're ready to go.